Welcome. One of the most important programs we have for pilots is the WINGS Proficiency Program. It's a way of encouraging people to maintain ongoing flight proficiency and knowledge proficiency. Our speaker today, Jim Piles, is the National FAST Team Outreach Manager and someone who's very intimately involved in pilot education. He's a leader in his church, he's a leader in the local universities in Salt Lake where he works, and he's someone who will now present to you how we're going to transform the WINGS program to make it even more effective. Please welcome Jim Piles. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathleen. You're welcome. Well, it's good to see everybody out today, and I hope you're having fun here at Sun and Fun. Um, I, I'll start having my fun when I get through here today. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here, but it's always a uh, responsibility I take uh, seriously to present any kind of information to pilots and to fellow people that uh, enjoy this type of thing and, and uh, try to be better at what they do. And I'm sure that that's what's brought you out here today, is because you want to be better at what you do. Um, I'd like to start out by taking just a few minutes, uh, five or so, ten minutes, and talk about FASafety.gov before I get into the WINGS program. And I want to do that because FASafety.gov is a very, very important integral part of the new WINGS program. It's important for you to understand what FASafety.gov is to the FAST team, the safety team, and also to understand how important it is for you to be registered there so that you can keep current uh, information coming to you as well as participate in the WINGS program when we start talking about that. So up on the screen, you'll see FASafety.gov. This is our home page. It's easy to get to. Uh, it's just FAA safety, one word, dot gov. You don't have to put in the www and HTTP and all that stuff. Just put in, in your browser, FASafety.gov, and it'll take you right to this home page. There's a lot of things that are available to you without registering. You can, you can look at our library, you can look at online courses, you can see what kind of events are coming up, and we'll test a little bit of that here real quick. Um, there's a lot of things available to you without registering, but we really request that you register. Because if you register, you get all the things you get without registering, plus you get the opportunity to set your preferences so that you will get email specific to the needs you have in aviation. If you would like unapproved part notices, things like that, they'll come to you. If you don't want those, you don't need to have those coming to you via email. If you'd like notices about uh, upcoming events in your local area, you can have those sent to you. If you really don't want those, and you just go online and check when you're able to go to an event, see what's happening, that's the way you set your preferences. So it's totally up to you uh, what you pick and choose. And let's, let's talk about that for just a few minutes. Now, I'm already logged on. Uh, you know that you're logged on because up at the top it tells you who you are, just in case you forgot. It tells you who you are and what your email address is. There's two ways to log on, by the way, or two ways to register. And one is to register as a pilot or airman, and the other one is to register as a non-airman. Now, we've had some people that have problems registering as an airman because they no longer have a current medical, but their certificate requires one. They would still like to keep current on issues and what's going on in the aviation community. Maybe they've had a medical problem and their medical's elapsed, but they're working on it. They're going to get back up and fly. Maybe they're going to start in a sport program, something like that. So if you have any problems logging on as an airman, then please take a few extra moments and go back and just log on as a non-airman. You still have all the same benefits with just one exception I'll show you here in just a minute. So log on, register, and then log on. So I'm logged on, and typically, uh, once you log on, this is going to go to your home page. Now, I'm on the live server here today. When we start talking about wings, we're going to go to what's called a beta site so we can uh, play around with it and show you something that's not on the live site, which is the wings program. But right now, I'm on the live site. And you can look up here on the screens and monitors, and you can see very easily that it's tailored to you. This is showing me all the events within 50 miles of my zip code, 84092. Anybody know where that's at? Salt Lake City. There you go. 
best place on earth, but we're not going to tell you about it. Um, if there's more than these few that are shown on this one screen, you can click, and it'll take you to the search engine. You can see all the events that are coming up, plus you can search for others. So if we were going to come down to Florida this week, we could very easily go in here and go down to the state of Florida once my eyes adjust, thank you, and we can come up with all the events that are happening in Florida. Now you'll notice there's 70 of these, and it lists 10 of them at first, but we want to see more, so we can go down and look at 50. You'll also notice there's some different shades in the colors. It's important to kind of understand that, get familiar with the site a little bit. The first few are going to tell you that they're in the past. They've already happened. And some people have asked us, well, why do you keep, why do you keep them up there for seven days, which is how long we keep them up there? That's so you can go in here and say, oh, wow, I was going to go to that flight review forum in, at uh, Sun and Fun. It was yesterday. I missed it. So it's a way for you to know that, yes, there was an event in, in that area, and yes, it was in that week that you thought it was in, but it's already passed. You've missed it. So you need to look for another opportunity. And those, these are all listed by default by date and time. So you need to scroll down past all the red ones. You know, typically in a, in a normal location, there would not be that many seminars uh, that have been in the past during the week. But because of Sun and Fun and so many of these great seminars here, we do end up with a lot of uh, seminars in the past, if you will. But you can scroll down. You can look at any of these seminars. You can register online. Again, if you've registered on the site, fasafety.gov, then it autofills your information. So let's just say that uh, I'd like to go to this WINGS program. I think it's the best one at Sun and Fun, to be honest with you. And so we could go in here and look at this, see what the seating was. There's 100 seats. There's 70 remaining uh, on the registered, so the people that have actually registered for it. And if I want to register, it's simple. I just click here. Put in how many is going to attend with me. We'll say zero. It gives you the opportunity to say, I'd like to have a notification sent to me to remind me that I've, I've registered for this. And I'd like it sent in five days or one day, the day before, 10 days before, whatever you choose. You can put that in. So I'd like one to tell me the day before, which was yesterday. If you haven't figured that out yet. And here's the great speaker that's going to be there. And actually, that's me. I'm signing up for my own seminar. Got to fill one of the seats. And now that's how quick it was for me to register. So if I go back to my home page or to my events, it's going to show me what I've registered for. Now I'm flipping around these screens really quick, and I realize that, and I don't expect you to memorize any of the things I'm showing you. Um, I know that you're going to go out, you're going to watch the air show, you're going to have a lot of fun out here today and this week. But when you get back home, go in and play with it. You can't break it. Uh, you might break your own computer, but you're not going to break the site. So go in and play with it all you'd like. Find out about it. Register. Find out what's there for you. It's really important that you do this because WINGS is going to be tracked on FAAsafety.gov for you. What we've tried to do with WINGS is take some of the ideas that were very successful in the old Pilot Proficiency Award program and move it over, make it more robust, track it online so that you know where you're at all the time and so that you can get immediate gratification with your certificate, wallet size card, and a transcript of the things you did to qualify for the phase of wings you now hold. So we've talked with a lot of people, we've talked with industry, we've talked with pilots, with CFIs, with FAA, and we've looked at the old program and said it was a great program, but it's time to move on, it's time to do more. How, let's ask a question out here. And you FA people that are out here, you be quiet about this. Let's see what the public says. Uh, how many, what percentage of pilots, there's about 650,000 active pilots, how many pilots do you think participate regularly in the WINGS program? What percentage? We've got a 10%. Anybody want to say it again? 4%? 50%. Twenty. Okay, no, how, how about uh, two years ago, which is the last date that I've got actual figures, it was 2.7%. The year before that, it was 3.2%. The year before that, it was 3.5%. 
Does that tell you something about the WINGS program, the way it is right now? It is good for those people that participate. It's even better for those people that participate in it the way it was designed. But there was no way to really track that, to keep people on track and do exactly what they were supposed to do. Well, with the new WINGS program on fasafety.gov, you'll be able to see instantly what you need to do, where you are in the program. And one of the big things, I don't know how people realize this or not, but when the WINGS program was originally designed, it was really designed to help you design your own pilot proficiency program, hence the name. And we, the FAA, would, and, and industry, would award you a little bit for doing that. You know, we'd give you a, a lapel pin, we'd give you a, a plaque, insurance companies would give discounts perhaps, uh, some uh, commercial vendors would give you discounts if you could show that you participate in the WINGS program. The idea was to do something to help the average pilot develop their own pilot proficiency program. It was supposed to be done year annually, it was supposed to be done year-round, but over the last 10 years, we've actually changed that program to be a little bit more than a glorified flight review. You go to a wings weekend, you fly for two or three hours with a flight instructor, you do a Saturday night or a Friday evening seminar somewhere for an hour, hour and a half, and you've got your wings, which qualified for a flight review which means you really didn't need to do it again if that's your only purpose in participating in a program for a whole year or two, actually, right? And we have found that over time, that's exactly what people have started doing. They participated in it every other year. They went to a Wings weekend or something very similar to that. They really didn't get the coverage over time that we expected out of the program. So, we have developed a new program. It's a more robust program. On the screen you will see uh, what I call the wings grid. And we're going to look at the top portion of this grid first as I explain to you the wings program, uh, the new wings program. You'll notice that one of the words is missing from the wings program. It's now called the pilot proficiency program, not the pilot proficiency award program. The biggest reward you're going to get from participating in this program is you are going to be a safer pilot. And isn't that what we're really after? That's your reward. That's the carrot that we're dangling in front of you. Now we hope, and we've had some pretty good indications from industry and other people, that if you participate in this program and we have a good track record over a year or so, that there's going to be a lot of commercial entities out there that are going to jump on the bandwagon and help give you some incentives above just being a good pilot for participating in the program. One of the classes that I've often taught over the years as a safety program manager and now as a fast team program manager is what would you like to be, a legal pilot, a current pilot or a proficient pilot? What would you like to be? All three. All three. Yeah, you would like to be legal, current, and proficient, right? Well, if you kind of think about the WINGS program a little bit, that might help you think this through. But I always equated it to a doctor. And I said, if you had somebody that you loved, a dear one, just think of somebody that you love, and you found out that they had brain cancer and they needed an operation. Would you go to somebody that said, well, you know, I got my license. I think I can perform that. Yeah, I, I think I can do that. Is that who you would pick to do the surgery on your loved one? How about the person that says, well, you know, I'm current. I've uh, done one of those in the last year or so, and I've seen one in the last 90 days, so yeah, I, I feel pretty confident I can do that. Or would you go to the person who says, you know, uh, the last three I've done this week have been very successful. Here's some of the problems that we've had and the ways we've solved those problems. Uh, I've read about 35, 40 journals this year on different ideas of how we can conduct this. Uh, so I, I think we'll be very successful. Which one would you go to? 
the last person, wouldn't you? Without, without even taking a poll, I bet everybody in here would do that. No matter what the cost, right? You wouldn't even be thinking about cost, would you? Well, why is it when we put our, that same loved one in an airplane with us, we don't think that way about them? It's okay for us to just be legal. It's okay for us to, well, you know, I did my three takeoffs and landings 90 days ago with somebody, and yeah, you know, I mean, it was actually, I touched down three times on the same landing, and we counted it. But, you know, is that what you would be looking for? And yet, that's what we do. We know that that's what we do, because as FAA inspectors, that's what we find when we go out to accidents. Now, that's not always true. That's not everybody. But it's, it's a rising concern. So with the WINGS program, we've decided to make it proficiency-based. In other words, you not only have to go fly and do some ground, but you've got to show some proficiency. It used to be that you would go out, and how many things did you have to do in the air? Does anybody remember on the old WINGS program? What would you have to do? Okay, an hour of, of basic maneuvers, an hour of basic instruments, and an hour of landings, right? So in an airplane single-engine land or airplane uh, multi-engine land, you had to do three, three hours of flying. Did you have to do it well? well that's good. But was there any regulatory, uh, anything in the advisory circle that said you had to do it well? No. So you could actually just go out and fly and do takeoffs and landings and have the CFI catch you from wrecking nine out of the ten times, and he would still say, I flew the hour for the wings on takeoffs and landings. He wasn't signing you off or anything. He just said, I flew for an hour, takeoffs and landings. So you go do that three times with three different instructors, three different areas of operations, go to a seminar similar to this, and there's your rubber stamp, you got your flight review. So you're legal, but you're not current, and you're not proficient. Okay? You're legal. Well, okay, so let's get back to the new program. The new program requires you to show proficiency. Everything that's, the, all the syllabuses and courses that are tied into the new WINGS program are based on practical test standards and the standards of completion, depending on what rating you hold, to those standards. If you're a private pilot, you're going after the basic level, then you have to perform to the private pilot practical test standards for the type and category and class of aircraft that you're flying, and you have to show proficiency to get a credit. It takes, if you look at my little grid here, I'll just explain this to you real quick. You have knowledge, that's ground. You have flight. And for basic, that's this first row. And you notice that you have a basic, two reds, they, so they call basic one and two, a green, and then you have the same thing over on the flight column. And that's true all the way down through advanced and master. Okay. So you still need to do three flights, three credits. They're no longer tied to hours, but credits. You also need to do three knowledge areas. Now that's an increase. Anybody remember what it was before? You just had to show up to a seminar, right? Well now you have to do three seminars or three things. Uh, and, and we'll show you what some of those things are. It's important for you to realize that the basic level is the lowest level, but it is the one that qualifies you or will qualify you for your flight review. Now one of the neat things about the new program that's totally different than the old one is the old program, you could do your things, and, and let's say on January 1st, you completed your WINGS program, you had a WINGS weekend, you went out and completed it. 
So your flight review is good till January 31st, right, of the next two years later. So if we did it in January, it's good till 2009. Well, now, to encourage you to participate on an ongoing process to amortize the time and money over a year's period of time, to encourage you to fly over a year's period of time, so that you'll get the advantage of being with a flight instructor during two or three or per perhaps four, depending on where you live in the country, different uh, types of climate, different seasons, which bring to us different problems as pilots. You have thunderstorms in the Midwest during the summer and spring and fall, but not during the winter. But you have ice that you need to talk about. So if you did a flight review or the WINGS program once every other year, and you spent an hour or even three, if you did the WINGS program with a flight instructor, you most likely spent that time talking about the specific flight and the specific time you flew. Because, you know, when it's 100 degrees outside, it's awful hard to talk about icing. You ought to try it. It actually cools you off a little bit. But it's awful hard to do that because we have so much we need to talk about. So with the new program, we're going to encourage you to participate on an annual basis and quarterly. The way we're going to do that is your flight review now will never expire if you continue to hold a basic level. And it'll track that online for you. So every time you do something that continues your progress in the basic level, and it moves your time frame for your basic level, your flight review moves right with you. So you never have to worry about that flight review coming due, because it'll just stay right with you. It's one of the big, big changes that'll help you uh, be a better pilot and stay current and proficient, hopefully, because you'll have to show proficiency. Well, this grid, if you look at it, you have three knowledge, three flights for both advanced master, or excuse me, basic advanced and master levels or phases. You notice some are red and some are green. The red ones represent those things that are required. In other words, they're all required. <laughs> all six of these are required for basic on this line. But the red ones are designated as required by us, the FAST team and the FAA, because we're going to put specific requirements for you to get this block filled and specific requirements for this one. And the green ones are electives. They're still, they still have to match curriculum. They still have to match proficiency standards. But you can elect the things that you would like to do to fill those boxes. Because maybe you fly a tail dragger and you'd like to spend some time doing some tail dragger work. Maybe you fly helicopters and fixed wing, and you want to mix and match a little bit. And this gives you the opportunity to do that as electives. Now, you may ask, well, why is the basic got two of each, and the advanced and master only have one? And that's because we feel most people will do the basic. We feel most people will do that because it qualifies you for your flight review. And therefore, we would like to have the most control over that. We would like to be able to direct you to the type of study you need to do for the type of flying you do to help mitigate accident causal factors. In time, what you will see here is you'll be able to fill out a profile of the type of flying you do, no matter what it is. You fly a Learjet every day. Okay? You fly a Super Cub every day. You fly your weight shift aircraft every day. You put that in the, into the pilot profile that I'll show you in a moment. You put that into the pilot profile and it's going to come up when you click on one of these boxes and it's going to say here's the number one causal factor for your type of flying. And here's all the courses that are now available for you to take to help you understand that causal factor. So it's no longer hit and miss. It's more specific about what is it that I do as a common pilot in this category. I have 500 hours. I fly airplane, single engine land aircraft. What's the highest risk that I have? The, the highest area 
of lack of knowledge over the United States has caused accidents. And we're going to give you that information right here in the WINGS program. And that's over time as we build things into it. You'll have a database built up that shows you that type of information. Now this little picture here is to help you understand the three levels and the requirements for required and electives. That's what this picture is. It translates on the web to these boxes here. So if we were to look at the basic again, we have a requirement for two knowledge requires an elective, two flights an elective, and those equate right here. Here's your knowledge area, here's your flight area, and you have your requires B1 and B2, and you have an elective as well in the knowledge, and the same thing over here in the flight. So it's a little easier to visualize it here, so that's why I put that up, this grid, and this is the way it's going to look uh, on the beta side anyhow. We may make some small adjustments to any of this between now and when we launch, but you can see how that looks. Well, let's go to the actual site and look at somebody in progress. Again, maybe we can do this, maybe we can't. When you go to the site, uh, you're going to go to My Wings, uh, actually Wings Pilot Proficiency Program. It's going to give you some basic information. It's going to give you instructions of how to do it. And then you're going to start the process. Now, I'm not here to teach you this and how it's all going to work, so we're just going to bypass that. And we're going to go right into the screen that we need to show you a couple things here. First, you set your preferences. And you say, what kind of category and class of aircraft do I fly in and did I want to participate in the Wings Program in? And you can see all of them that are available. You throw them over here on the left-hand side. So I'm an airplane multi-engine land, airplane single-engine land, helicopter pilot. So I threw all those over into the left side. I have an a airline transport pilot, air, uh, single and multi-engine. I have a commercial pilot, instrument rating helicopter. And I also would like to participate in any of the private pilot courses that may be available. So I threw those over. Okay. You save the changes, and you move on into My Wings. This is going to give you a couple other options here that we'll bypass for right now for the purpose of our discussion today. <clears throat> and then you go into the participation page, or the page is called My Wings. This is where it's all tracked for you, and this is where it's e made easy for you to understand and do. Remember, we'd like to make this easy for you. Um, many of you may have seen the little blurb that's been out that I put out about the new program. And I want you to equate this. Do you remember the first time you got in the first airplane you ever flew? Now, some of you are as old as me, and you have to think a long ways back to that time. But do you remember how intimidated you were? Right? I mean, they were probably only like nine instruments on the instrument panel, but man, there were a lot of instruments on that instrument panel, weren't there? You know, what do all those dials and things do? Well, I know that anything new is difficult. And so you will find some difficulty and some intimidation to any programs you see on fasafety.gov or any site for that matter uh, on the web. And you probably have already experienced that. Combined with that, you have the frustration of your computer doesn't work exactly like you can't, it could. Uh, you know, Jim gets up there and flashes these pictures around. Why? Because he's done it a million times and it's so easy to do and he makes it sound like it's really easy. Well, I'm a realist and I know it's not that easy. And I feel for your uh, situation and that's why we will try to make this as painless as we can when it gets out here. But it is going to take a little effort from you. It's, you're going to have to spend a little bit of time learning what all those dials and whistles do, just like you did on that airplane. But I guarantee you that in just a short order, you'll be flying around on this website just like you do in your Super Cubs or your 210s or your Learjets. It will work out, you will get used to it, and you will have fun with it. You know, I'm telling you, you will, you will, you will. So just keep that in mind. So here's, here's my wings. Now I'm already in progress here because I wanted to show you what it looks like. There's two things we want to show you. First, we show you a 13-month calendar grid. This is the 13 months from April of last year to April of this year. 
You notice there's some numbers up here. It says I have one credit, two credits, one, 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 seven, 2.5, two, and one. I was really aggressive this month. And so you can see that I've done something all year long. Okay, I've tried to do something every month. And I can look and see what I've done on these months by just hovering over it, and it's going to tell me every course that I took for those seven hours. You notice the little K and R and B2. Well, remember we said there was knowledge, there was flight, there was electives, they were requireds. They were for the basic phase, the advanced phase, and a master. So you've already learned a decoder ring. It's simple. There's knowledge, there's flight, there's three levels, basic, advanced, and master. And there's knowledge and flight. I think I already said that. And there's electives and requireds. So that's what those letters mean. They're really simple. We do have a grid there that shows you that. So that's one way to look at your progress. You can see the holes. Now, look, I really didn't get a whole lot of flying done during the summer months. That may be because I coach baseball, and I don't have time to fly. I'm out with the kids coaching baseball, and I don't do a lot of flying in the summertime. Well, you might say, well, that's why I don't need much training in the summertime. But we all know if that's when you do occasional flying, you may need more training for the type of weather and things that you'd uh, encounter during the summer than you would when you fly all the time, and you're used to it, and you're familiar with it, and you're proficient with it. So keep that in mind. We give you that visual picture. The other thing we do is also give you the grid. Here's your basic, your advanced, and your master. It immediately shows that you've got the block filled. It shows you what courses you've taken, how many credits you have, and that the block is full. Notice that it shows you your current wings phase is advanced. Notice all the boxes are checked, advanced. It shows you when your flight review expires. So you can go here any day and see when your flight review expires based on the WINGS program. Now, if you go out and get a new rating, that resets the clock, doesn't it? If you go out and uh, do a flight review for some reason, maybe you got an aircraft check, an insurance check at a club, and the CFI said, we'll sign you off for a flight review at the same time. That's great. You can go in and reset this clock based on something you've put in. And it'll tell you that. This says it was based on the wings phase, but if you go in and reset the clock for your own reason, because of something you've done, then you can reset it and it'll say based on uh, pilot input. So in other words, we don't guarantee that it's right then, <laughs> because you, know, you can go in and put any date you want. But that's how easy this is. Now let's say that I want to continue, and you go, wow, man, that's a grid, and what classes do I take, and how do I do this? It's really simple. Let's go to one that I haven't completed down here. And let's say I, I'd like to know what I need to do to find a flight required master credit. All I need to do is click on the little binoculars. That's an eye test, by the way. How many people knew that was binoculars? Okay, one of our developers has the best eyes I know to man. His monitor, I think, is set up at 4,000 by 3,000 DPI or something because he has the best eyes known to man. But it'll take you to this page. This is our search page. Notice it says Pilot Proficiency Program Credit Search. And it automatically puts in the information you asked for. Flight, required, master. And it searches by your preferences. Remember I put in, I was airplane, single, multi-engine, land, and helicopter. Okay, and I also have a private ATP commercial ratings. So it automatically does that for you, so you don't have to rethink it. And it comes up and says, here's the three, and this is a beta site, here's the three courses that you can take, or syllabuses you can fulfill to do the WINGS program for this category. Now you say, well, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. What does all that mean? Well, you just click on it right here, more information. And if our developers, by the way, three of them are sitting right back there, if they've done their job, then this comes up to where we have more information about that credit. And thankful it does. This gives us all the things that we need to do. We can do it by the commercial practical test standards for airplanes, the airline transport pilot practical test standards for airplanes. 
And here's the ten items we need to show proficiency at. And we can do a printable version of this, so it prints out really nice, so you can put it on your kneeboard. You can give it to your CFI to make sure you're doing everything. There's links here to the practical test standards, the current versions, so you can go get more information about these right from the practical test standards. We've gone through every practical test standard for every rating that we have, and we've divided those up into what the industry and the FAA fills an average pilot could show proficiency in in an hour, give or take a few minutes. Now, if you're really good, you do it all the time, you might be able to do it in 30, 40 minutes. If you live right next to an uncontrolled airport where you can go right out, you know, five, six miles away and do it real quick and come back, you might be able to do it in a little less time. If you have to fly for 30 minutes to get to a practice area, someplace where you can do maneuvers, it might take you a little bit more time. But the average pilot should be able to complete these in about an hour's time. We don't call it an hour flight, we call it a credit. Because you know what? If you're not very current and it takes you five hours to show proficiency, then that's how long it takes you to get this credit. What we want you to do is be proficient, not just put a check mark someplace. Because the check mark's not going to save your life, but proficiency will. And remember that loved one? Maybe you're not willing to do it for yourself, but how about the people you put in your aircraft? If you would spend the time and effort and money to search out and find the proficient pilot, wouldn't you do the same thing, or for the proficient surgeon, excuse me, wouldn't you do the same thing for a pilot? For that same loved one, I hope you would. So anyhow, any, any questions about anything I've gone over so far? I realize it's fast, I'm not trying to teach you how to use the system. I'm just trying to give you an overview of what, what we're doing with the WINGS program. Yes, sir, let's wait just a moment. We should have a microphone coming around. Right back here in the back. Here's my question. Let's take an example. Um, pilot, lapse medical, Flying his light sports plane, okay? Okay. At the same time, I'm also an uh, alder light pilot, and I get twice the time of alder light as I do my light sports plane because it's cheaper. Sure. Now, give me an example on how I document it on that. Ba basically, because I lapse medical, and I'm a private pilot, lapse medical, but I want to document it and, and keep my proficiency up. How would you handle it? Well, First of all, I'd have to know more about you, but you would go in and set your preferences. Now, I'm going to bypass the preferences, which you can do anytime you'd like on our search engine, and you would go in and say, okay, I, I want to do a flight, and then we're talking about the basic here. You can do flight. I want to find out what's required. I want to do my basic, uh, basic one or two, or basic here, not my master or advanced. And... I'm not going to use my preferences. I'm going to search, um, let's see here. You said weight shift. Is that what you no, said? Uh, okay, I didn't specify that. Okay. Uh, single engine land, single engine sea, okay. private pilot, lapse medical. I want to be able to document but, both. But you're uh, doing it as a sport pilot. Because I don't, uh, I got to because my medical is lapsed. So okay. we go in here to airplane. Single engine, Single land. engine land. We put in here sport pilot, because that's what you're Correct. showing, and we do a search. Okay. And this is going to show you the practical test standard syllabuses that would fill that box for you in your okay, situation. How do, I, how do I document this? Great question. That, I, I paid you for that, didn't I? No. That leads, <laughs> us, <laughs> that leads us right into the next part here. So, so, you, so you have this. You can find the things that you're trying to do here. Well, what you need to do is pick out the syllabus that you would like to do. So let's just go in and pick one of these out. Let's play, let's say, um, airplane, single engine land, air work. And I've already got that one, so let's pick one I don't have. Let's do slow flight stalls and slips. And we're going to go in here to more information. Now notice this says that you can use the sport pilot practical test standards for airplane, gyroplane, glider, 
and flight instructor. Okay, so in other words, those are all combined into one in our practical test standards. So you can click on there and get all the information you need right from the practical test standard. And here's the, uh, the elements that you have to do. Maneuvering during slow flight, power off stalls. Now remember it also, we, we put a disclaimer in there, you don't want to do anything your aircraft's not capable of doing. And that's also in the practical test standards. We don't want you to get killed out there trying to get proficient. And when you get through doing this with, with a authorized instructor, in this case, then you come in and say, I'd like to request credit for this course. And you go in and click on request credit. It comes up and says, gives you instructions on how to do it. We'll bypass all that for right now. And you put in the date you did it. So you just click on here, say we did it today, here at Sun and Fun. And you put in your authorized instructor's email address, a representative, an ASI, anybody that can validate this for you. So in this case, it would probably be your authorized instructor. Now notice this is going to require them to be on and registered on fasafety.gov. That is a requirement. Okay, so I documented it, but let's say he didn't document it, my flight instructor. Now, how do we work that part out? Well, this is how he's going to document it. Watch what happens here. So I put this in, and I can pick it from one I commonly use down here, so I don't have to remember them. So you find out what your CFI's uh, email address is once. You put it here. You can search if you know his name, but you don't know his email address. So you can search and see if he's registered. It'll show you that. I'm not going to take the time to do it here. And then you put their name in here and say, OK, we want to submit this for credit. Now what that does is send that CFI an email that says, Jim Piles is requesting you to validate that you've done this with him. Or it goes to, like I said, a representative, an FA employee, somebody like that, where you walk in with a, a logbook endorsement that says you've completed that. And in the advisory circular on the web, it'll show you exactly what those endorsements should say for CFIs or authorized instructors to put in the logbook. When they get that, then let's go back to my wings, and here's how you look at this. You can look at your transcript anytime you want and see right where you're at. So we're going to do that here real quick. When, when you see the transcript, it's going to show you, now we're back to my wings. This is the landing site. This is where it all happens. You go in here to, to view my ring, wings credit history. Try saying that about 10 times in a row in front of a mic with all the lights. Um, and it'll come up, and here's your transcript. Remember all those courses I showed you up there that I've taken? Here's your transcript. Here's the ones you've requested. Here's the one we just put in that we requested right here. And it shows up that they haven't approved it yet. So it, it shows you that you've got a couple here. You might want to remind the guy, you know, call him up and say, hey, Joe, what's the deal? It's in there. It's waiting on you to approve. But it keeps track of that for you so that you know. Here's the ones that have been approved. It shows you what areas they qualify for. Remember that knowledge, flight, basic, required, elective. It's all right here. If you want to go back and review what the course was, we can click on it right here, and it's going to tell us what it was. Okay, give us all the information. Here's the rejected wings credits. You must not have paid the bill. So they rejected them. And maybe you just picked the wrong course. You know, you put in multi-engine land instead of airplane single-engine land. So they said, ah, you know, Jim, nice try, but put in the right course, and I'll approve it. And so that's why those are there, but you need to track those. And here's the ones that have expired. They're only good for a year for the WINGS program. And so when they've expired, they're back here. Now we keep that history for you indefinitely. You have it there. So you can go back and say, well, I've already done that. It was a good course, but I want to move on and do something different. So you can see that right here. You can print this out anytime you'd like to print it. There's a printer-friendly version. So that's how you can see that the CFI has approved it. So it's a two-step process. You ask for approval or a validation from somebody, and then they validate it. Two-step process. Now, if you take an online course, it's automatic. On, on, if you take an FAA safety.gov online course, it's automatic. When you complete it, you get it. Okay? If you take a seminar and you go to an nice FAA question. seminar, okay, you will have a sign-in sheet. If you register, remember I showed you how to register at the beginning of the seminar today, 
if you register on fasafety.gov, you register for the seminar that you're going to, then you'll name, your name will already show up on the attendance record, and all you do is initial. Then, th then you will be given credit for that seminar. The seminar instructor, say, could be a, the FISDO office up there gives in Michigan. They give instructions. We go to them. It might be a college. It could be anywhere. Right. They normally filled out a form, and then uh, the old form, the blue one, I guess, we filled out and mailed it in. That's negate no more, right? That's right. You don't need it anymore. Now, it's does all done, the, tracked online. The instructor uh, uh, from the FISDO, or another safety instructor, you might be FISDO, uh, do they input the data from the computer for you? Yes. Did that, that if you register, it's automatic. If you do not register, then you have to write your name and email address on the attendance roll and tell them you'd like credit. Now, you have to be registered on fasafety.gov because it doesn't know who you are if you don't. So you do need to register online. A couple more questions back there, right next to where you're at. And how will the instructor, they'll get an email, and what will they do with that information? Is it a click box or whatever? Yeah, it's just as simple as this. They'll get an email that has a link on it that says click here. Also, th they will also have a, a web, they'll be able to log on to the web and see a list of those things that are waiting for their credit. Very similar to this list you see here right now for your transcript. They'll have a list of people that are requesting credit. They'll be able to see what the course entailed to make sure that they did do all those things. And if they're just a representative validating somebody else's training, then they'll need to see a logbook or something that verifies, that they can verify that that work was done, if it's a flight. If it's, again, a seminar, that's done automatically as long as you register. If you don't, then you have to write your name on the attendance roster, and it'll be put in by the representative or FAA person that's conducting that meeting. Now this is also true with industry. Industry can do this too. Anybody that has a course that's approved, and it would be listed here as an approved course, they can give you credit for that by merely you attending the course and passing the standards for that course, whatever it is. Another question. Uh, I need the attendance register. I came in two minutes late, and I guess I didn't sign in, or is that my mistake? I mean. Uh, how do we do this so we get credit for this course? Well, right now this program isn't in existence. So you do it like you've always done it. If, they're, if the people here at Sun and Fun are giving out the little blue and green slips, the then, you, then you would do that. But on the new one, on the new one you would just initial the attendance record. And so you need to make sure you do that. If you come in late, you need to make sure you do that. At some point, you're going to be too late to get credit. And they're not going to pass out the, the form again. You're too late. You missed it. If you didn't get the key elements, then how can we say that we've taught you everything you need to know? So you need to keep that in mind. You see, there's, this is going to do a lot for us because it's going to make the meetings start on time. It's going to make people show up on time. It's, hopefully they'll end on time because they'll be by a syllabus and an agenda as opposed to just haphazard. They, they will have a purpose uh, for having these seminars, you'll see more seminars showing up on accident causal factors based on actual statistics rather than just random subjects. And this is all based on the new FAST team and how they're working uh, more efficiently to use data to bring you what you really need to have to be a better pilot and to mitigate causal factors. Mr. Hill. Uh, Jim, I'm sure that you've heard this before. We are asked frequently. I don't have internet access. I do have a fax machine, but I don't have internet access. Does this exclude me? It does not totally exclude you. However, <laughs> we will encourage you strongly to go to the library where it's free, uh, go to your colleges and universities where it's free. We'll also encourage you to uh, get with your CFI to help you out. Because you do need to register on fasafety.gov, which means at a minimum, you have to have an email address, which you can get from a myriad of places for free. So we're not incurring any cost. Now, I might add, one, one person did come up to me a while back when I did this, and they said, well, isn't this going to cost me a little bit more money? 
And can you really do that? Can you make me spend more money? And, and re remember, this is a voluntary program. The WINGS program, nobody makes anybody do the WINGS program. This is akin to going back to that doctor. Do you just want to be legal, current, or proficient? You have to pay a little bit more to go up that scale. And it's the same thing here. You have to pay a little bit. It is going to cost you a little bit more to stay proficient. If you get a good CFI, by the way, um, you'll find that they'll tell you that when you're flying, even on a cross-country trip, you can do things on that two hour, you know, between takeoff and landing and uh, your kidney requirements. They'll tell you a lot of good things you can do to help stay proficient. So you're not wasting that two hours of just looking at the beauty that you can actually be doing things. So keep that in mind too. Here's the question I got. I have, I'm phase one through 10 completed over the years. Yes. I've documented in my logbook and the FISDO, after I've got it in the form, was sent in, they sent me a little sticker thing that goes into my logbook that verified it. Now, that's in my logbook. It's not in your database. How do I verify that I had phase one through ten? Good. Well, there's only three phases, so I'll, I'll at least give you that, that credit. You can, you can do the three phases. But right here, it says, download a certificate. At any time you want to verify that you have the advanced or basic or master level, you click there, it'll take you to a nice color printable certificate and a wallet size card you can carry with you and your transcript that shows clearly anybody that asks you how you got that advanced, in this case, level, it'll show them every course that you took. Now, where does this help? Where, where can this be used? Those of you that have flight schools clubs. Just think of all the flying that you do to keep people current and, and the hassle that is. Well, design a course that fits into the, to the basic level specifically for your school and run it through the National Resource Center here and get it approved. It'll show up as one of the courses that qualify for all five or six of the elective credits that are available. And that's the way you can get that done. And then you just go in here and say, if you would like to fly our aircraft, if you'd like to rent our aircraft, you need to have at least an advanced level and at least these three courses on your transcript. Now, how does somebody else verify that you have that? Okay, there's another thing in here where you can request credit, uh, you can ex allow external wings credit review. Okay, so it's a simple form to fill out. You just put in the email address of who you'd like to be able to see your records, transcript, just like in a college. You put in any reference numbers. This could be an insurance number. It could be a club number, whatever. Or it can be left blank. It can actually be a phrase. Um, and then it will send out an email very similar to this. It says, Jim Piles has advanced level on these dates. And you have the right to look at his transcript for 24 hours, and here's the link. Click on it, you can go look at his link, and, and, and find out what courses he or she took. And that's sent to your insurance company, to your flight club. So imagine what this can do for some flight clubs that really need to show proficiency to their insurance company, and they can say all of our people hold a basic or they don't fly our airplanes. And anytime you'd like to validate that, we can, we can do that just by clicking a few buttons, we can send you the transcript. Is there any linkage uh, planned for this uh, new WINGS program to IACRA or any of the other FAA databases to check if your medical's current, if you're, right. um, you know, you've this, gotten a new rating? At the good question. At this time, no, but there are future uh, ambitions to do that. We need to get the program out there. We need to get people using it. We need to get the uh, industry behind it and giving some incentives and motivation for people to participate in. So we have enough time for maybe one or two more questions, depending on how hard they are. So no hard questions. <laughs> I might have missed it, but when is this going to be available to register? Uh, that's, a, that's the $50 question <laughs> that my paycheck's based on. Um, we're, we're actually looking at launching sometime in June nationwide. We do have a proof of concept that we'll do uh, at certain areas in the United States starting May 1st, but nationwide you should start seeing a lot about this uh, starting sometime in June. That's, that's the goal. 
Jim, what about those folks that uh, are in progress right now with good. the current WINGS program? When we change over to the new program, what happens to them? Good, good question, Bill. If we, we sure don't want to stifle those people that are working, especially if you're on phase nine and you'd like to get 10, you know, because that's the one that uh, we have another set of wings for. But we really uh, would allow you and would want you to continue that program. So for, from June 1st or whenever we launch till the end of the year, you'll be able to participate concurrently in both. If you do everything required for the basic in the new program, you will automatically, you have to submit for it, but you can then submit and say, I hold phase nine or seven or 13, whatever you hold, in the old program, and I'd like my next wings. And we'll also <clears throat> issue those. If there's pins available, those will be issued. If there's not, you know, they're just till the supplies last and then it's gone. So basically you have the rest of this year to finish any phase that you're in. If you participate in the new program and finish it, you'll get both. So that's what we've tried to do uh, to help people finish up their old program as best they can. Okay, uh, we have time for one more question. The, that form, the, the old green form, form, so there's three instructor hours, et cetera, et cetera, you mailed it to the FISDO office, that's still be going to be good to the, till you convert over to the new program, right? The form. Yeah. Yes, well, let me tell you this. Till you hear the new programs out there, that's good for 20 years. It's not until this new program is launched, which we assume will be sometime nationwide in June, that's when you'll see the dates that actually tell you when those old forms are no longer current. Right now, we anticipate that to be December 31st, 2007. And you'll have till the end of January 2008 to actually apply for it. Okay, so it gives you some time to apply because of the holidays and, and things like that. So that's it. I really, I know there's other questions out there. I wish I had time to. Uh, Will you be available after? To, to I am going to be available, and I'd be more than happy. I'll be out at the FAA uh, Fast Team booth out here in the hangar. I really enjoy uh, your participation. The questions were great. I know there were more of them. That's why I'll be out there to entertain any questions I can. Look for this. There'll be more information coming out as we get closer to launch. We appreciate you very much for showing up and have fun here at Sun, Sun and Fun and drive or fly home safely. Thank you very much. How can we document this seminar?